vlogger disclaimer I decided to make the following video because I want all Republicans across the state of North Carolina to know exactly how the NCGOP conducts its annual party business. I'd like to personally thank the blog Longleaf Politics as well as the Mecklenburg County Republican Party for their efforts in discussing the convention process of the NCGOP. However, after reading both stories from these two sources, I felt these organizations left off a lot of vital information that conservative activists around the state should know. Okay, so this video is going to be titled The Ultimate Guide to the NCGOP Convention Process. In this video, I, I hope I can answer you know, as many questions as you may have about how we do party business here in the state of North Carolina. Um, and please keep in mind that a good reference point for the information I'm going to be giving you in this video uh, will be coming from the North Carolina Republican Party Plan of Organization. And this was the version that was most currently ratified in June of 2018. Now, each state has their own way of conducting party business, and it could be entirely different from how we do things in North Carolina. For example, Georgia and Texas both have a convention system similar to North Carolina, but they only conduct their convention cycles every other year and not annually like North Carolina does. Also, a lot of states such as Florida and Pennsylvania have a very limited and small group of people that conduct their party business behind closed doors. Here's a hint off the record. Don't move to either of those states. Also, Alabama is another state that does closed doors stuff too. Just don't do it. So if you do not live in North Carolina, your state party business mechanism may be completely different. Okay. So the very first thing you need to know about the spring convention cycle is, are you registered? The very first thing you need to do before you even think of getting involved in the convention cycle is make sure you are a registered Republican in the state of North Carolina. If you are not, then please stop this video right now and go down to your local board of elections office and register as a republican okay the deadline for this is always going to be 5 p.m on january 31st so get on it let's talk about precinct meetings these vary heavily by each county some counties have their precinct meetings on the same day as their county convention and other counties have their precinct meetings a month before the county convention. Make sure you check with your county GOP so that you have the most accurate information. You probably know what the word meeting is, but what is a precinct? Well, it is your immediate neighborhood where you and other residents live. In each precinct, you have a location where you and your fellow residents of that precinct go vote. This could be a church, a school, or a club building such as Lions Club, Kiwanis Club, or Shriners Club. Uh, precinct meetings are held every Mar February or March in all 100 counties across North Carolina. These meetings tend to be very short, only lasting maybe 10 minutes at most. Again, these are the, the precinct meetings. A lot of, um, like I know, like Me Mecklenburg County and Wake County are doing precinct meetings, but then they're going to have like a train in session. Um, and remember, a lot of these precinct meetings are sort of an appetizer to the convention. So um, don't expect to go to a precinct meeting and be like, oh, I'll be out here in 10 minutes and then go on with your day. No, that's the precinct, the actual precinct meetings in 10 minutes, not the actual event. Okay, just so you know. But the purpose of a precinct meeting is to find out who are the political activists in your area. Uh, so now, for two of the four years I was involved in the New Hanover County Republican Party, I was the only member of my precinct to attend the county convention. But fortunately, on the other two occasions, I had one or two people from my precinct in attendance. 
So at these meetings, you will elect the precinct chair, and depend on how many other people attend this meeting, you may also elect a vice chair, a secretary, and a treasurer. Now, if you're completely new to the political scene, don't get too overwhelmed thinking you need three other officers to run your precinct. A lot of precincts, like mine, can be run efficiently with just one person. Electing a precinct chair. Precinct chairs are essentially liaisons between neighborhoods and the county party. They are responsible for getting people out to vote in their local area. Also, precinct chairs get to have a strong say in how the local Republican Party is run. Be uh, because precinct chairs get a seat on the powerful, powerful county party executive committee. If you're not sure about serving as a precinct chair, you can always just attend the precinct meeting and sign your name on the paperwork as a guest and not as a member of that precinct. However, after doing that, I would encourage you to go to a couple county GOP executive committee meeting, me, meetings and then when you're ready, consult your county's chair or vice chair to get appointed to the county executive committee. It is possible okay, to be a delegate to the county, district, and state conventions as a non-precinct chair. The most important thing that I would say about a precinct meet is to not blow it off. The precinct meet is a required first step if you want to be involved in the annual NCGOP convention cycle. If you don't attend the precinct meeting, then you will be unable to serve as a voting delegate to your county, district, and state conventions. If you cannot attend the precinct meeting, but still want to be involved in the convention cycle, then you must fill out an absentee form and send it to your county GOP leadership as soon as possible. Okay, next step in the process is the county conventions. These are held in March of every year. Most of them take place on Saturday mornings, but always check with your local GOP because some do meet on weeknights. The county conventions are usually held at a venue different from where you have your traditional monthly meetings because a lot more people attend the convention than just a run-of-the-mill monthly meeting. Attendance should be the highest of the year at these county conventions. If they are not, then you probably have big, big issues in your county party that need to be rectified as soon as possible. Cost of attending. Yes, there is usually a fee charged for attending the convention, but it usually only ranges from $5 to $20. This fee ne usually needs to be charged to simply rent out the meeting room or building where the convention is going to take place. What to expect? Well, you should expect to spend about two hours at a county convention in an even-numbered year. And in an odd-numbered year, I would budget about four hours. And if your county does precinct meetings on the same day as the convention, then I would add at least another 30 to 45 minutes to those times. This is a big... This time... The time in... The time frame is a big reason why a lot of counties, an overwhelming majority of counties, will only have conventions on Saturdays. Because look, I mean, if you do a um, convention on a weeknight, and let's say you try to start at 7, and you go 4 hours, well you're out at 11, which is way too late for a lot of uh, people have to go to work the next day. Something to think about. Um... Now, in odd number of years, you will be electing officers to lead your county party. These are usually the chair, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. However, if you live in a suburban or heavy urban county, you will probably be electing at least two to three times as many people. I think this year in Guilford, we're going to be electing like 15 or 16 people. So it's going to be a nice long convention, just the way I like it. Okay, so uh, the other people you might be electing could be people in charge of elections or precinct operations and, uh, and or regional chairs who are responsible for certain areas of the county. Okay, in even-numbered years, you will not 
be elected officers. That is why the convention run times are almost always going to be shorter in even numbered years than in odd number years. So at the beginning of every county convention, you will have a guest speaker followed by remarks from elected officials. And depending on what year it is, you may hear some comments from various candidates running for office. When this portion of the convention is done, a report from the credentials committee is heard. What's the credentials committee? Well, I'm glad you asked. The job of the CC is to make sure that all delegates on the convention floor are registered Republican voters who live in that particular county. Most of the time, this report will be very brief, and the CC chairman will just read the county name and how many delegates. But that's no fun. Sometimes, and I recommend they read it by precinct. It's more fun that way. Business meeting. At this point in the convention, we have transitioned from a lecture setting into a business meeting session. Now, you will hear reports from various other committees on the convention board. The first is usually rules because the business meeting portion of the convention cannot proceed without some sort of guidelines, such as who could sit where on the convention floor, where is a sign seen for guests, and how many minutes, minutes of debate do both sides get, among other questions posed in the rules. After rules, we have the plan of organization committee. The PU, <laughs> short of plan of organization, is often referred to as the constitution or the handbook of how the party should be run. Um, and these are principles such as what can the minimum number of members be at an executive committee meeting or how many meetings need to be held each year, as well as what are, what are the duties of the county officers. Finally, in the business meeting are the resolutions. These are usually statements or one-page reports that can honor an elected official that had just died or maybe some an elected official who did something good for the local community. And sometimes the convention body can even use a resolution to censure an elected official for bad behavior or voting non-conservatively on an issue. Now, resolutions can also encourage or discourage elected officials from voting on certain pieces of legislation. They can also be presented to aid state party leadership or dissuade state party leadership from things like raising the state convention delegate fee. That last one was one that I tried to do a few years ago, but was declined. Yeah. Okay. Next step, electing delegates to the district and state convention. This is a very easy step in the county convention agenda, but it is the most important. There are almost always more delegate spots at district and state conventions than there are people to attend. The chairman will usually say something like the following. <clears throat> I would like to make a motion to send all of our county delegates to this district and state conventions. And then that motion is seconded and accepted unanimously by the county convention delegates on the floor. Elections. The most consequential item at the convention is usually also the last one on the agenda and that's election of officers. It should be noted that candidates will often run together as slates in order to speed up the flow of convention business. Also, voting is usually done by secret paper ballot. The votes are tallied, and while that is happening, announcements on upcoming events are made as well as closing remarks. Then the election results are read, and the convention is over, as long as a motion to adjourn, of course, is made. District conventions. Unfortunately, a lot of people do not attend the district conventions, which is why I think is real. Which I think is really lame because there are a lot of consequential things that go on at districts. Okay, the biggest reason for low attendance is that currently, as of this tape and date, January thirtieth, twenty eighteen, you are not required to attend the district convention in order to go to the state convention. Right now, you just need to attend your county convention in order to be a voted delegate at the state convention. State uh, district conventions are are held in April of every year, 
and are 99.9% .9 of the time usually held on Saturdays. Most of the time they are not held and should never be held on the same weekend as Easter either. This makes things very compact yet crazy because often you only have three Saturdays to hold 13 district conventions around the state. If you live in a small urban district such as District 4 in Raleigh or District 12 in Charlotte, your convention will be a lot quicker to get to. But you also probably have to put a paper bag over your head because uh, you're outnumbered like 5 to 1 by the Democrats. Okay, a little joke there. <laughs> Sorry. But if you live in the larger rural districts, such as District 3 or Eastern North Carolina or District 11 out in the mountains, um, then, you know, you're going to have a lot, probably a lot longer drive to get to the convention site. Hey, I had to crack a joke back there. All right, give me a break, really. Anyway, um... The district conventions usually cost a little bit more to attend than county conventions because districts need a bigger space or building to house more people from multiple counties. So expect to spend between about twenty to fifty dollars. And also some districts offer lunch as part of the, the convention fee. Um, uh, I know District Seven uh, over the last few years they have been the only district in the state where there's actually free to attend and actually the um the county parties will get together and pay for um the venue and pay for refreshments and everything um they'll all get together and pay for the the district convention expense out of their own bank accounts um now the districts that offer lunch is part of, in other words you have to um, the only way you you can go to the convention is you have to pay the fee, and the fee includes lunches. I I wish that they would offer a um, and one year they did, but then they took it away. Is they should have a fee of you know maybe fifteen dollars without lunch, and then maybe thirty dollars with lunch or something. But they've kind of gone to more of just a one price fits all system. So time estimates. In a non-presidential, even-numbered year, such as 2022, assume about two hours for a district convention. In an odd-numbered year or an even-numbered presidential year, you should assume at least four hours. In some districts, because of size, it could the convention time could be a lot greater. Uh, like District 3 out in the eastern part of the state, they have like 10 or 15 counties. So, um, and actually it has happened, it's possible for a six or even an eight hour convention. And they also have a lunch break in there. Um, 2014, the convention started at 10. It was not over till four and it could have gone longer, but the, the building that we were at was, um, only rented till four. And then the prior year, um, was an odd number year, 2013, the, the convention started at 10 and didn't get over to about 7. So, um, But if you want to be on the safe side of this thing, uh, really district conventions should be treated as all-day events. Okay, Don't think, well, I'm going to go to district conventions. It's going to be over by noon, and I'm going to have the rest of the day to go shopping with my girlfriend or something. <laughs> it, it, the, the, the district conventions really do need to be treated as all-day events. Can't stress that enough. The agenda for a district convention. Most of it is similar to the county convention. However, the guest speaker is usually going to be higher up the political totem pole. Uh, you could hear from your congressman of that district, or it could be state legislature, um, or even if you know a governor if they live in that district, or a U.S. senator. Um, I, I know that a lot of times uh, District Nine will have U.S. Senator Tom Tillis speak at their convention because he lives right in the district, right? Um, also on the agenda, of course, you're going to have your credentials report, your rules committee report, plan organization report, but then you're going to have your elections. Um, in odd number of years, you're going to elect district officers. Now, these roles are similar to the county, but keep in mind, they serve multiple counties, okay, not just one. And they also serve on the very powerful, powerful state central committee. Um, at least the head chairman does of that district. 
Okay, then the important, the really important stuff begins. The stuff that, unfortunately, um, Longleaf Politics and Mecklenburg County GOP left out. I think Mecklenburg was more intentional and probably Longleaf was accidental, but whatever. <laughs> okay, the really important stuff begins now. Okay, and this is when you elect members to the state executive committee. What's going to happen is you're going to huddle up with your county leadership for a few minutes um, and other delegates who may be attending the district convention from your county and pick people to serve on the executive committee committee now each county is going to have a different number of members to the executive committee because the number of members in the executive committee is determined by how many registered gop voters live in that county and the magical formula that you need to know is for every eight thousand registered republicans in your county you get one member to the executive committee okay remember eight thousand to one or one per eight thousand, whichever one's easier for you to remember. So, what is the executive committee? Well, the executive committee meets at least twice a year at the state level, and a minimum of twice a year at the district level. One of the uh, EC meetings takes place at the state convention in May or June, and another one usually takes place at the biannual Hall of Fame dinner held in November or December in odd number years. In even number years. The meeting is usually held in December or January following the November elections. At the state level, you do any party business that needs to be done between the annual state conventions. This could be any plan organization changes or resolutions that may come up from time to time. Also, the state EC debates and then votes on the county, excuse me, on the state party budget and discusses upcoming state conventions and other events. These meetings usually take place, take about two to three hours to occur, but sometimes can take all day, as in the 2016 case of the Hassan Harnett chairman controversy. The District EC is where you get to know other activists and county chairs from around your own congressional district. County and district events are discussed at length and extensive planning is done for the annual district convention. The District Executive Committee also handles any press and business items such as resolutions and letters of praise or rebuke to elected officials. The District EC meetings usually meet two to four Saturdays a year, but there are some districts such as District 3 where you meet once a month. Meetings usually last from 10 in the morning to around 2 or 3 in the afternoon with lunch served in between. That's more of a personal experience. It's not, you know, don't don't get mad at me. Well, our district EC meets at nine in the morning and we try to be out by noon. Okay. Yeah, that's but this is a personal experience talking about. Or, you know, uh, yeah, ten to two, ten to three is an estimate, folks. Okay, please bear with me. Now, two of my favorite venues to have a district EC meeting at uh, when I was in the 7th Congressional District down in Southeast North Carolina uh, was Salem Pizza in Salemburg, North Carolina, which had a buffet, all you can eat. It's still open, by the way. Really great food, really great barbecue, too. And then we had, uh, we met at a, um, before they redistricted the district um, earlier, like, in 2012 i think we were at a buffet restaurant in elizabethtown and unfortunately that one's closed down um, so in even numbered presidential election years most of the delegates that are sent to the national republican convention are picked at the district convention and then the rest of the delegates are voted on at the state convention which brings us to the, the, the state convention okay so congratulations for making it all the way to this point in the video. You have survived me talking about precinct meetings. I bored you to death with the county convention, and then we had the district convention. You're probably get, getting ready to jump off a cliff. Bear with me, okay? Um, these state conventions are usually held on the first or second weekend in June at various sites around the state. Okay. Um, it should be noted that 
the the state conventions in presidential years like 2020 convention will actually be held in the middle of may may 14th to may 17th in greenville the 2019 convention is going to be held in concord uh june 6th to the 9th okay and the state conventions and even numbered presidential years are held earlier because of rnc rules regarding national convention delegate selection rules the state convention begins Friday afternoon about 1 and goes to about 7. On Saturday, the convention starts at 9 in the morning and goes to about 7 with a 90-minute break for lunch in between that. During these times, all of the events that take place at a county and district convention occur at the state convention. But instead of 100 people in a room, it's 1,000 people in a lot larger room. In odd number of years, the chairman and vice chairman of the NCGOP are elected, and in even numbered presidential years, a national Republican, excuse me, a national Republican National Committee man and national committee woman are elected, along with um, Republican National Convention delegates. In years such as 2018 or 2022, no elections take place, but there is always plenty of business that gets done in regard to the state plan organization and the state party platform. And it should be noted that county and districts do not have their own platform. So the state convention is really the only time for activists to really um, tweak or modify the party platform. Any business that does not get done by Saturday evening gets automatically booted to the executive committee meeting, which always occurs Sunday morning around 10 or 11. You should expect lots of express maneuvering of business items at this EC meeting because a lot of people, unfortunately, are ready to get the heck out of Dodge after being in a, stuck in a convention hall for two days. Cost of attendance. The state convention can be relatively affordable or very expensive. This decision is yours and yours alone. Who's going first of the Temple Games? Oh, sorry. Had a little nostalgia flashback from Legends of the Hidden Temple, right? Great show. Okay. The general session fee, or as I like to call it, the minimum fee to attend the convention is usually around $75. This fee will allow you to attend the business sessions, as well as any breakout sessions, and uh, go to the exhibit hall, which is loads of GOP organizations giving out free swag and information, also selling books and clothes. Also, you can get some free food and drinks at various hospitality suites on Friday or Saturday evening hotels the state gop has an official hotel that they pick and then they give a discounted rate to convention attendees however i found it much better for my wallet if i stay at a red roof or la quinta inn some two or three miles from the convention venue and i save over 50 percent by booking with hotels.com but if you want the whole total convention experience and you can't afford it, okay, I don't want Dave Ramsey showing up on your doorstep Monday morning saying, why did you put that on the credit card? Okay, if you can't afford it, you know, okay, then go ahead and why not get the full convention package. This will cost you around $350, 350 and it, but it does not include con hotel expenses. Keep that in mind, okay, but it does include your dinner Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings. Your lunch on Saturday is also paid for, as well as your breakfast on Sunday mornings. Um, you can also, if it, you can also uh, spend seventy-five dollars, and then if you want to just go to breakfast on Sunday morning, or just go to one of the dinners instead of all, you can also, you know, that that'll probably add fifty fifty dollars to your bill. And you can do general session and then a meal for like 125 or something like that if you want to do that. Um, excuse me. Um, now, I did... <coughs> excuse me again. I did the full convention package the very first year 
I ever attended an NCGOP convention uh, in 2011 because that year uh, the convention was in my home city of Wilmington, so I didn't have to pay for a hotel. Um, I will tell you that the speakers that are at these meals are okay, but I have to be honest, I could always watch something better and more worthwhile on YouTube or C-SPAN or read one of their books. They're probably going to hawk in me and make me buy. Um, the food was also served waiter style, very slow, you know, too, and the portions were very small. And keep in mind, I don't eat salad either, so I'm like, people are there with their salads. I'm like, oh, where's my main course? And 45 minutes later, there it is. <laughs> um, and plus, after an intense day of being in convention meetings, the last thing I want to do is get served dinner portions that remind me of my elementary school lunch days okay so i recommend you just pay the general session fee and stay at a nice decent mid-gray hotel such as red roof inn which is my favorite and you will definitely thank me later especially if you're an introvert and need a break from people after being in meetings all day Plus, you get so much food delivered to the comfort of your hotel room. And nobody has to know if you want to eat two or three entrees by yourself, okay? And be a pig if you want. Okay. Well, that is the end of my video commentary. I hope I've answered all of your questions regarding the Republican Party convention process here in the great state. The beautiful state. God's country, North Carolina. Um, so... For the Conservative Pelican, I am always your host, Bobby Crawford. Thank you for watching.